With geopolitical risks high on the agenda for next week, with Brexit and the US elections on the horizon, it promises to be an interesting few weeks. We discuss this and more with Bob Mason of FX Empire. This is your week ahead. Hello, Bob, and thank you once again for joining us. A lot of things to discuss as we look at the week ahead. It promises to be a busy week with vital stats due for release. Uh, what is the economic outlook for the major currencies in the week ahead? Yeah, it's a busy week for the majors. I mean, for the dollar, it's a quiet one, however. Key stats will include non-manufacturing PMIs, the ISM number, which is the market's favorite on, at the beginning of the week. You know, that's going to need to show an uptick to avoid a market panic over the economic recovery. We've got jobs, job openings on Tuesday, and then we've got the weekly jobless claims figures on Thursday. So those are the three key sets of numbers. On Wednesday, we've got the FOMC meeting minutes. You know, obviously Powell's been giving testimony to, you know, on Capitol Hill, and we've got the revised policy framework and lower for longer, you know, close to zero to 2023. So will there be any surprises there? Probably not. Um, looking at the Euro, it is a busy week. We've got service PMIs on Monday. Um, then we've got, you know, focus shifts to Germany. We've got industrial production, trade and factory orders um, to focus on. Um, you know, those will be particularly important. You know, we've seen manufacturing sector activity pick up in Germany. So, you know, these numbers will need to support the survey based data. For the pound, also a busy week, um, finalised service sector PMI at the start of the week. And then we've got manufacturing, industrial production figures trade data and GDP numbers at the end of the week. So expect plenty of influence there. That's on the economic data front. The first round of the presidential debates took place already, and it was a bit heated. Uh, but how did the markets react, if anything? And how do you see the markets reacting as the race hots up? Yeah, the, the first presidential debate, that's probably one to forget, really. Trump just interrupted and used similar strategy that he uses with, with the media, um, basically preventing Biden to talk. Ultimately, however, Biden stood up against the pressure and the barrage, even though there were some personal attacks, you know, Trump attacking his family and so forth. Um, you know, so there was no no real winner, um, though Biden stood up. So some would argue that, that that was a better outcome for Biden rather than Trump, who needed to deliver really to narrow the gap in the polls that Biden continues to lead on. So markets reacted negatively to that, reflecting market sentiment in terms of, you know, Trump's the desired winner um, obviously while spending will be cut considerably there's no there's no gonna, there's no reversal of you know the tax um, breaks that corporates and the wealthy have received um, that's something that Biden's gonna you know repeal um, so that's market negative and obviously uncertainty in terms of other Biden policies so all in all you know the markets took a bit of a hit there's some uncertainty you know Biden will he win get the 270 electoral college votes you know that's a concern political deadlock Trump unwilling to concede. Obviously, you've got the postal vote that he's saying that, you know, could be rigged. So, yeah, there's a lot of uncertainty and the markets aren't going to like that. So expect volatility to really pick up. Dollar and the Japanese yen will be favoured havens. Um, obviously, the equity markets will take a punch. So it looks like President Trump is pulling out all the cards he can to catch up in the race at the moment. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. Let's turn our attentions to commodity currencies. What should our traders be looking out for in the week ahead? For the commodity currencies, a relatively busy week. For the Aussie dollar, we've got trade data um, at the start of the week. Then we've got business confidence figures later on in the week. Key in the week, however, is the RBA monetary policy decision on Tuesday. You know. There's been some talk of negative rates. Um, so is the RBA about to start dropping that bombshell on the markets and the Aussie dollar? You know, obviously the economy has struggled since that second outbreak in Victoria, um, you know, and consumer spending and so forth need to continue to rebound and support the economy. So will the RBA step in and deliver more? Um, for the for the loonie, you've got trade data and then you've got the IV PMI. You know, those are key stats early on in the week. And at the end of the week, your employment figures are particularly important. And that's going to have particular influence on the loonie. And then for the Kiwi dollar, you got business PMIs at the end of the week. And then you got uh, business confidence figures, you know, at the start of the week that will also influence the, the Kiwi dollar that has been struggling, um, but found some support from the you know positive economic data out of China of late. With GDP and household spending figures due out in Japan, how will that have an effect on the yen? And what is the economic data coming out of China? 
Yeah, for the Japanese yen, GDP numbers and household spending figures. Um, are they going to have a material influence on the Japanese yen? Probably not. What's going to drive it? Uh, US politics primarily and, you know, some element of Brexit. Um, as we saw on Wednesday, you know, the market convulsion in response to, you know, the first televised debate, the yen found support as a result of the risk of sentiment alongside the dollar. Um, so we can expect more of that if, you know, the markets continue to feel a Biden victory or a political deadlock, you know, come next month. So that's for the yen. For the Chinese one, service sector PMIs, uh, end of the week, it's a shortened week with China on holiday for the vast majority of it. So we're not expecting too much from that. Um, I think geopolitics will be the key driver in the week. And finally, geopolitical risks, many hot topics with the week ahead, especially with the US elections and Brexit on the horizon. Never a dull moment when it comes to those two topics. But how will the markets react? Yeah, finally on the geopolitical risk front, I mean, it's not been, there's never been a dull moment as it were since, you know, Trump, you know, took the election in 2016 and Britain voted to leave the EU in 2016. So what have four years have been? So we're coming to a culmination of political events that could really change the future for the markets. Um, you know, will Trump win the, the election next month? You know, there's a lot of doubts, polls suggest not. And will Brexit happen in the way that, you know, obviously the, the political powers would be thought it would be? Um, will there be a trade agreement? Uh, you know, talks resumed last week. Um, progress was made, concessions were being made. You know, so the pound found, found some support on the hope that both sides would finally come to some agreement you know, last chance saloon and all that. So expect, you know, the washout from Brexit and, you know, the the, the greater detailed talks um, to provide direction in the weekend, that's going to be particularly important. And obviously Trump's not going to go down with a fight. So expect, you know, plenty of chatter from Capitol Hill in the week ahead. Well, that's all for this week, Bob. Thank you so much for joining us and I'll see you again next time. That was The Week Ahead with Bob Mason of FX Empire. But in the meantime, keep up to date with all the latest developments in the market by following us on all our social media outlets.